so we are going to solve some of the CSR questions so this question we are going to solve first the question is a 1 is to 2 mixture of this complex and KCN and K2 PD CL4 gives a square parent complex that is A identify the correct pairs of donor atoms trans to each other in a complex A from the following combination so here we have Me2N CH2 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 PP H twice this is upon treatment with case S C N and K2 PDCL4 in the 1 is to 2 ratio so we here we'll get a square plan complex that complex looks like this spalladium and this will be nickel sorry nitrogen Phosphorus. This will be pH. pH. Methyl. Methyl. And this will be NCS. NCS. So this is the uh, complex which is forming here. So if you know this complex, then it's very easy to identify the answer. It's So here we can see nitrogen, nitrogen. So this is there in the option. And similarly, we can see nitrogen and phosphorus. And this also there in, in the option. So why not this SCN? So why uh, only NCS in the both the cases? Why not SCN? So here, uh, like, uh, there is one concept. Uh, pi, pi bonding capacity so this concept is must if you want to answer this question so here we have sulfur as well as phosphorus so this both uh, uh, can form a pi bonding so as we see in the groups phosphorus is here in period sulfur is here so as we go this way the d orbital size is decreasing so because of d orbital size is decreasing the sulfur is having a more uh, pi bonding capacity than phosphorus okay now so if uh, if uh, if here if we have sulfur so what will happen this bond will be strong because it can form a uh, strong sulfur can form a stronger phi bond compared to phosphorus so this can this bond will become stronger and uh, the, then this bond will become weaker okay so just uh, it's like that so because of that reason so if if sulfur is he is here and phosphorus is here we may not get a stable complex because it will be less bond order it will be more bond order we may not get a perfect square planar geometry okay now so when nitrogen is here so when uh, nitrogen is trans to phosphorus means like uh, why nitrogen is uh, means like uh, if uh, nitrogen is the uh, trans to phosphorus then no problem this is because of nitrogen doesn't have a pi bonding capacity so uh, nitrogen doesn't involve in the pi bonding with a complex hence uh, when nitrogen atom is trans to phosphorus phosphorus become able to form an efficient pi bond with a metal hence uh, this will become more stable so that's why phosphorus is trans to phosphorus and nitrogen are trans to each other so this is the concept which is involved here so just remember sulfur cannot be trans to phosphorus because of the pi bonding sulfur forms stronger pi bonding that means the phosphorus uh, uh, palladium and sulfur bond will be strong palladium and phosphorus bond will be weak so because of that reason um, this cannot be trans to 
sulfur and phosphorus cannot be trans and then here we have another reaction sorry another uh, reaction sorry question reaction of nitrosyl tetrafluoroborate with vascous complex gives a complex a with a angle of 124 degree so the complex a and no stretching frequency uh, if you know no stretching frequency that is a 1620 just remember so if you know the stretching frequency it's very easy to identify if you don't know also then we'll go by the reaction so what is a vascous reagent vascous reagent is nothing but ir cocl pph3 thrice twice so this is the vascous reagent this is square planar geometry so this is a 16 electron species so when we treat this one with the no plus bf4 minus it exists in the ionic form we know that nitrosyl in the linear form this is three electron donor in the bent form this is the two electron donor but here in the neutral method but when we take in the uh, ionization method ionic method in ionic method both NO plus in the linear form as well as NO plus in the bent form so both are two electron donors okay so now uh, since this is 16 electron species so the NO can go inside COCl NO PPH3 twice and here outside the count BF4 minus will be there so this is the uh, total equation and then uh, there is a question the HNMR spectrum of uh, this complex at minus 20 degrees so a typical AA XX pattern in the volcanic region so the complex what they have given so here this is the complex we have rhodium 5 electrons and these two are two hydrogens so at minus 20 degrees it shows a xx pattern but at 70 degrees it shows a uh, single line this is t2 just remember this kind of questions when they ask always remember at low temperatures what will happens the uh, the exchange process will be slower than the nmr time scale so because of that reason we will be getting a two different signals so at, at high temperature when we will take this exchange will be faster than the nmr time scale i think 10 to the power of minus 8 is the nmr time scale so at high temperature this will be faster uh, compared to NMR time scale so because of that reason we will get a, a single line so the answer will be a free rotation of the ethylene ligand about a metal 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 olefin bond it cannot be an answer because change in the apticity of the cyclo pentadienyl ligand so it cannot be a, it cannot be an answer because here, here we, they are talking about olefinic region and this this almost come more uh, more of field ship compared to olefin then this is this is one of the important question so just remember when we have vanadium plus 3 okay so when we have a uh, other than water other than water in that case we will get a three bands so when we have a water in that case we will get only two bands so i will draw that diagram and i will explain so here they ask that one band is at 1700 17800 second one is at 20, 25000 the correct assignment of these bands respectively So 
see here we have vanadium H2O6 3 plus so scandium titanium vanadium vanadium is 4s to 3d3 so we have a plus 3 that means we will remove so this comes under the d2 system okay so first before drawing the uh, diagram just check whether it belongs to electron promotion or hole inversion so this belongs to electron promotion so I have made a video what is electron promotion and the hole inversion you just go through it here I am not explaining for electron promotion so this will be equals to the see here other way also you can remember for d2 and d3 I will I will tell a shortcut only just take t2g don't take eg so I will I will tell a shortcut so this is what t2g and this is also t2g in the t2g how many how many vacant orbital is there one so the ground term will ground ground term will be just keep one t1g in d3 there is no vacant orbital so a2g is the ground term like that you can remember if t2g is coming here means t1g is coming here means t2g comes here and this will be a a2g and uh, this will be a t1g of p orbital okay so as we can see in the answer so here we can eliminate these two answers because because here the ground state is a to g so ground state cannot be a to g so we have a th two options in one option we have a 3 t 1 g f 2 3 t 2 g f means this from here to here so another one is 3 t 1 g f 2 3 t, t 1 g p this one okay next uh, in, uh, in in the second option we have a 3 t 1 g f 2 3 t 1 g p and 3t1g f2 3t2g p so 3t2g p will not exist so the answer will be a so i have made a video for electron promotion all inversion you just go through it and uh, this this question also i have done in my lectures uh, in a fluorine number spectroscopy so sf4 we know that sf4 structure so if you can calculate the structure then you can easily identify which symmetry is this so low temperature minus 98 degrees centigrade of 19 nmr spectrum of s14 so it's a doublet of triplet so sulfur is a sixth group element so six pile six valence electrons so four fluorines will form like this and this will be so this is a trigonal bipyramidal which occupies a lone pair disposition so this is the structure of S sf4 now so why you got a doublet of triplet so sulfur is here so this is the structure right so this is the structure so here you get a doublet of triplet How many different types of fluorines are here? This is axial, this is equatorial. Two types of, of fluorines are there for that doublet. And triplet means each fluorine, this axial fluorines coupled with couple with couples with these two fluorines, they give a triplet. Similarly, here also. That's why a doublet of triplet. And uh, this question also I have made. Uh, I think it is there in my lecture uh, C CLF3 we know that CLF3 is a T shape T shape so here uh, we can, by elimination method we can eliminate option C and option B now we left with option A and option D so here uh, in the option D we have a doublet of singlet so how it's possible let's see here we have a 
this is axial and this is axial and this is equatorial so these two equatorials couples with axial they give us a doublet and uh, this equatorial one couples with these two axial they give us a triplet so there is no chance for singlet so the answer will be a doublet of triplet for a t-shaped structure next uh, this is the uh, mechanism and the, okay in in a low chlorine ion concentration the anti cancer drug cisplatin hydrolyzes to give a, a diaqua di complex and this binds to the dna via adjacent guanine so here this is the mechanism which is involved for a cisplatin how the cisplatin works in the our body so initially cisplatin will they so this goes into the body so where we have a ammonia I think one of the chlorine atom will be replaced by the water okay so next uh, it binds to the DNA to the n seventh carbon this is very very important to the n seventh carbon it will binds so here itself uh, in a cisplatin structure mechanism here itself we can make many questions so the DNA in cisplatin mechanism will bind to the guanine so which position n7 position and what is the step the uh, first step second step i have made a video on this also you can go through it i think i have made a video on the platinum it means like uh, i think so, some it, it was i made it long back you might find it in my old videos just go through it and then we have so this type of questions are very very important and is very easy also so this is the outer sphere complex outer sphere electron transfer reactions so here we have water and a phenanthrolene so for water the rate of reaction is 4 when we have phenanthrolene the rate of reaction is 3.0 into 10 to the power of minus sorry plus 7 so why this much rate for this one why this much faster these reactions so uh, I made a video on outer sphere mechanism as well as inner sphere mechanism in outer sphere mechanism what will happen so when we have a two inert complexes we need to bring them very close first step is we need to bring them very close after that there should be uh, like uh, if uh, uh, if imagine this is the Fe water and this is the Fe phenanthrolene so there is some bond length differences will be there so first before reaction we need to bring those bond lengths in the same same level okay for that we need to use some energy so there is one equation also so just remember when we have a strong field ligands or low spin complexes low spin ligands in that case uh, that uh, uh, we now need to bring uh, them very close because they will be having a ideal bond bond length so we will no need to use any energy to uh, do the bond uh, bond length uh, rearrangement so because of that reason this complex is very fast in reaction so the answer will be the phenanthrolene is a pi acceptor ligand that allows mixing of electron donor and orbital orbitals and has the rate of reaction so this is this this is the answer and then uh, this uh, this question from bio in organic chemistry this is also very it's very important so at ph7 the zinc plus 2 ion in a carbonic anhydride it reacts with CO2 to give so if you want to answer this question you must know the mechanism how uh, carboxy anhydride works so what is a carboxy anhydride here the central metal atom will be zinc okay so this zinc atom is tetrahedrally coordinated with the 1 OH and 2 3 steadine units 
this structure also very important so initially the water molecule will coordinates to uh, this hydrogen through the hydrogen bonding and now the co2 attacks to this oxygen now it will become OH and OH and here three steady units okay now so in the in the options we can find this structure if we see this answer <coughs> answer A we have a ZN and we have a oxygen attached to CO2 and oxygen attached to CO2 and hydro hydroxyl group we have so this is the way how it binds and uh, there are some points some important points about the this uh, carbonic anhydride so carbonic anhydride will be using for the conversion of CO2 into HCO3 anhydrides okay and then So this is uh, these are the some uh, questions which I collected from previous year papers. So I'll be making a, another video on remaining questions. If you have any doubts, you can make a, uh, you can write in a comment box.